In Luke's Gospel, the 23rd chapter, beginning at verse 44, it was now about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, when the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, calling out with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And having said this, he breathed his last. It is the last word of the seven last words of Christ. It is the third time in those seven words when he addresses the Father. Father, forgive them. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And now, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. These words are words of the Son to the Father, expressing His absolute and complete trust in the Father, His commitment to the Father. The words that Jesus spoke here are taken from Psalm 31, verse 5. Let me read that passage to you. Into your hands I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. And so Jesus quotes that passage in his last breath. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Only he doesn't quote the rest of it because he was providing for our redemption. Because God is a faithful God. He trusted the Father in his last breath. It was a breath of faith, of faithfulness, of trust, of commitment. Jesus, in these words, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, was laying down his life. You need to understand that Jesus is committing his spirit to the Father's hand. In John chapter 10, the Lord Jesus spoke these words, No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. Jesus, as God and as man, willingly laid down his life. In his last breath, he, in his still sovereign authority as God, chooses to lay down his life. He laid down his own life on the cross. Do not think of the death of Jesus as a martyrdom or as simply a murder. Jesus laid down his life voluntarily on the cross. That's what he did. This also points to the reality of his death. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. We need to understand that biblically death is not ceasing to exist for anyone. Death is the separation of the immaterial part of a person from their physical body. That's what death is. Death is separation. So in these words of Jesus, when he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit, he is committing the immaterial part of his life to the Father while his body is breathing its last, showing this was a real and complete and full death. Matter of fact, John 19, 33 says, When the Roman soldiers came to Jesus and they saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and there came out blood and water. That detail is told to us to make clear that the death of Jesus was a true and complete death. As he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Why did the Roman soldiers come along and break the legs? Because if someone was in the excruciating pain and torturous slow death on the cross with their, their wrists pierced with, with spikes and their feet, they, would, they, they couldn't breathe. And as they would, move their, they, they would move down to try to relieve the pain that was in their hands and their feet, all of the oxygen would come out of their lungs. And so they would push up in order to try to breathe and the torturous pain in their hands and their feet would be there. So what a Roman soldier would do is come along and break the legs so they could no longer push up. They would be asphyxiated and they would die. But they didn't do that to Jesus because the psalmist in Psalm 22 says none of his bones were out of joint. So Jesus had already died. 
He had already committed to the Father his spirit. And look at how all of creation responded. The sixth hour, that's noon, there was a darkness over the land until the ninth hour. That is three o'clock in the afternoon. When the sun is normally at its highest, it was pitch dark. All of creation is responding to the Creator, to the horror of what had happened. There was darkness over the land for three hours. And it's interesting that in the Exodus, there was a darkness, a darkness that could be felt. This was an eerie, supernatural darkness when the sun would be at its peak. It wasn't simply cloud cover. It was total darkness. Beyond an eclipse, the sun no longer would shine because the creator of the universe had just died. Into your hands, Father, I commit my spirit. But something else happened. When the sun's light failed, the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Matter of fact, we're told in Matthew that it was torn from the top to the bottom, from heaven to earth. We're reminded of these words from Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 to 23. Therefore, brothers, since we have confidence to enter into the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain that is through his flesh, and since we have a great high priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience, our bodies washed with pure water. Let's hold fast the confession of our faith without wavering. When the curtain was torn, it was symbolic that it was the end of the old covenant and the new covenant had come in. That Jesus' death on the cross meant that the, the way that had been closed, only one person, one day a year on the Day of Atonement, the high priest could enter beyond that massive, uh, thick curtain that, that only the high priest could enter, and he could bring the blood, and he could put it on the, the Ark of the Covenant. But now, that veil is torn. Supernaturally, by God, the veil is torn, showing that what had happened on the cross was making a new and living way that all who trust in Jesus can enter right into the presence of the holiest of God. Not just one person, not just once a year, but every day, every moment, we have direct access into his presence. Why? Because Jesus said, Father, into thy hands I commit my spirit. The veil was rent, it was torn. It was ripped apart so that you and I can get in.